Our thanks there to Jurgen Klopp. That was long, but very insightful, very interesting. I I'm not sure what you make of it. Jamer, there's a... I'm looking out the corner of my eye, I can see your face. There's a sort of, almost a smirk. What are you thinking? No, I'll tell you what, I've not heard that argument put forward so well. Um, it is, what he said was spot on. The, the, one caveat, um, Saka getting injured today was an impact injury, so you can't blame that on playing for England during the week. And a number of the injuries that people are tallying up are impact injuries like Virgil van Dijk, which you can't legislate for as part of overplaying. But the, the thing about the broadcasting, and Adam, you know, we're on a TV uh, show now, um, but what Jurgen Klopp's saying is a, such a great point. You know, the TV companies could change that. I know Only Good Social was moaning about it last, uh, last game round, but having said that, they won against Everton with an early kickoff and not much rest in between. But the risk for injury has to be heightened. And what you don't want, what we don't want to be doing, is trying to cover games. February, March time with depleted squads because of the um, the, the fixture lists and the, the scheduling. So I, I, it was long, but that's what I love about Jurgen Klopp. He doesn't hide behind the question, does he? He, he says what he feels, and I thought he was spot on there. I have to throw this out there. Astro Super Sport is in no way influencing when matches are played in the UK. It is 5 40 a.m. here, so the last thing in the world I would want to do is to say, yeah, I feel like doing a game at 5.40 in the morning. <laughs> I just want to clarify that before we, uh, before we get into any more further discussions. Is this a, a legit concern even within the Leicester squad or any of the other teams and players you've spoken to, Andy? Yeah, it is 100%. Of course it is. Um, like we say, Leicester are missing four of their, four of their best players. Um, for a prolonged period of time, they've missed Jamie Vardy for a spell. They've missed James Madden from, uh, for a spell. They've missed Johnny Evans. So it is, it is, a, it is a, a major, major issue which players have to deal with this season. And I know people will go, oh, well, um, they're professional athletes. They should be able to deal with it. But it's, it's like Jurgen Klopp was saying, it's so different because of a COVID season. You've not had the rest um, over the summer break. And then you've not had the pre-season time in order to build the resilience and, and the resistance you need in order to get through the season. And, I know what um, people are saying in terms of some of the injuries are impact injuries, but I think you'll be finding that a lot more of the impact injuries are coming because players are tired, they're late, they're half a second later onto stuff. So if someone gets to the ball and when normally it's a 50-50, their players coming in half a second later and then it turns into a bad tackle and, and stuff like that. So I think it's, it's going to be a real problem and I'm sure it probably is only a matter of time before um, the five subs gets reintroduced. I know people were against it at the start of the season, but I think having seen the stats of the amount of players who are, who are more injured than, than in previous years, I think, I think that is something which will also change. Yeah, an impact one, PK for Barcelona yesterday on his knee, the full weight of another player. But in terms of uh, fatigue, more than anything else, Toby Alderweireld for Spurs, going down rather late on in what looked like agony. But what are the players saying? Andy, amongst themselves about a solution for this. I'm sure you still have a lot of friends at Leicester. They are playing in Europe. They're the ones playing on a Thursday night and then playing again on a Saturday, or sorry, well, rather a Sunday. Still, that's a three-day swing to get back to home base if you're playing away from home and recovery and then training for the next match. It is knackering, but what is the solution? Yeah, I don't know. Um, obviously, players, the Thursday, Sunday shift, players are a little bit more used to just because that's the same. Um, that's the same in terms of whenever the season is it. You'll play Thursday in the Europa League, you'll play Sunday in, in the Premier League. I think the, the one that Jurgen was stating to is the Wednesday night in the Champions League, and then you play the early kickoff from the Saturday. Um, whether they, they, you're going to have to start moving more games to a Sunday rather than the Saturday, but then there'll be European games scheduled for a Tuesday or Wednesday. So I, I really don't know, to be honest. Um, what? Can I start? Like the What's the difference? Can I just ask, what's the difference between doing a game on a Wednesday and then playing again on a Saturday when teams who play the Europa League have been playing on a Thursday and then playing on a Sunday? It's the same time difference, the same yeah, gap. It, yeah, the game, it's rare that the team who plays Europa League on, on the Thursday, if they've been away, will play in the early kickoff on the Sunday. They'll usually play on the four o'clock or, or as latter stages of, of how we're doing it now, maybe the seven o'clock game. I think what gets managers back up is when, when they play the 12 o'clock. And I know it sounds ridiculous that you go, well, it's only an extra three hours. What difference is that going to make? But it does make a lot of difference in terms of players' rest time. They can get a better sleep in and stuff like that. So it's all the, it's all the small margins. And I also think Jürgen Klopp made a good point there where he said about 
having the five sub option isn't to you want to change five players, but it's knowing that you can take someone off, knowing that if something does happen to someone, you can then still also make another sub. I completely get what you're saying, Sam. I can't. I don't make three subs to try and change the game because if then someone gets injured, I'm finishing the game with ten men, and, and they can't take that risk. So I think that five subs is more of a security blanket where you make his usual three subs. Um, to try and affect the game or, or tactics-wise, and then he's still got the security blanket of if, if someone does get a muscle injury, which is, as we've seen, highly likely, he can still make a, a like-for-like -like substitution and, and finish the game with 11 players. Yeah, if, if, I'm not sure if you saw, Jamer, what um, Jose Mourinho was talking about yesterday when referenced about the injury to Toby Alderweireld. He was saying I, he couldn't predict when the injury was going to occur. He wouldn't have subbed them off to avoid the injury which happened because it looked like a tear, a pull, not entirely certain what the details are right now, but you can't predict certain things, even if you have eight substitutes to make in a game. Absolutely right, Adam. And uh, Jurgen Klopp would, would have that situation with Trent Alexander when he went down against Manchester City. There's no way of knowing that Trent's going to go down, so therefore you wouldn't protect him by bringing him off. I mean, it's, uh, it's a difficulty. Now, I, I always think that sports science has a lot to answer for in this regard because muscle injuries generally are avoidable um, whether it's through the drink the hydration whether it's through more stretching whatever um, but interestingly and this this point has been brought up with a few of my friends who know know more about the data than I do that this season hasn't been extraordinarily different to any season before there might be a higher number in Manchester City or sorry in particular in Liverpool I think there's a couple of clubs who have a higher number and again when you're looking at impact which is Thiago which is um, Van Dijk in particular. You know, these things, it doesn't matter how many subs, they're going to be injured anyway. So th there's a lot of discourse about the number of injuries, even in commentary I was listening to in the UK here. They were saying massively amount, uh, the massive amount of injuries this season. The data doesn't prove that from what I've been told from people who know better than I do. So um, it's a difficult thing. And I understand Jurgen Klopp, I understand Pep Guardiola. Um, what, as I say, what Jurgen said today was, or just now, was, was fantastic. And as Andy, um, related to there, the fact that th your decision making is changed by the fear of someone getting injured. Um, it would be easy to bring five subs in like they have done in the championship and across the, the main uh, t uh, leagues in Europe. Alternatively, which is a bit more risky, you just say you can use three subs and if you end up with an injured player, a legitimately injured player, then you're allowed an emergency sub. But that just complicates the rules. So I think five, five or three, simple as that. Do you still stand by your 20 minute Halftime break, which you, you threw out as a solution, a potential solution before the international period? Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, it, it's, a sport, it's a sports science issue. Um, Cater going down with, a, with what looked like some sort of hamstring injury. You know, you don't, unless it's a, um, and, and King, I don't know if you, how many uh, muscle injuries you've had in your career, but I used to get them because I wasn't able to train properly after an operation. So theoretically, if I'd have done my sports science bit properly, done my warm ups properly before the games, I wouldn't have ended up pulling my calf. Um, I was just, I was slightly ignorant towards it because I wasn't used to being injured. But when it comes to um, the sports science department, these, the players now, King, you know this, they'll have, a5 or sorry a3 sheets of paper with data from every day's training pretty much so the sports science people know the next time they're going to go to the toilet before the player does or you would think and it sounds ridiculous but there is that much data about that they should know what's it, what position the player's in and what they need to do to avoid these muscle injuries what i find interesting is uh, in all but two of their premier league games liverpool have used all three slubs that includes today Manchester City made two subs yesterday. They've made 15 substitutions from a potential 24, if my maths is correct. They haven't really utilised having three, let alone five. It seems to be almost subjective, Andy. Yeah, listen, I think whenever um, a situation like this um, becomes a thing managers are going to use it for their own agenda clubs are going to use it for their own agenda of course they are that's that's the, that's the nature of, of football people try and steal a march on on their rivals in any situation people didn't vote for five subs in in this league because they felt it favored the bigger clubs it's now the bigger clubs saying well we now need five subs everyone's going to use it for, for their own thing man city will want to use five subs because they've got an outstanding squad but like you say they're the the stats of them only using two in the majority of their games, that, that doesn't add up that they need it, unless Pep Guardiola could argue like 
what Klopp just said that about he he does save one just in case um, something happens to a player. So I don't know. I, Jamo's point about having a 20 minute half time is interesting, um, but then some of the injuries like we've seen with with Trent Alexander Arnold, for example, happened in the first half anyway. So where do you draw the line? Um, I don't think we need to go back down the route having a a water break like we did after um, COVID in, in the project restart. I don't think that was necessary. Um, so, yeah, it's a hard one, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. And it, but it's certainly something which needs looking at, and, and I'm sure it will do in the next few weeks. And it's going to be an argument. Uh, as, yep. Sorry, Jamie. Adam, sorry. There is one thing which I haven't even asked the question. Um, I mean, Andy made a good point. Yeah, some of these injuries are first half anyway, as opposed to uh, second half and the extended half-time break. But I don't know what Europe's data is like as well, because if I'm not mistaken, when um, Project Restart, whatever it was, people were talking about high number of injuries to the tail end of last season, and that was with five subs as well. So it'd be interesting to know what Europe or the top leagues in Europe, what their injury stats is compared to the Premier League, given that they have these extra substitutions. I don't have the full data for this weekend, but... Before a ball was kicked on Saturday, I can say there was a 16% increase for injuries from the uh, relative period to last season, if that plays into anything whatsoever. Let's move on a little is bit. That, is that, is that, that EPL or Europe? Uh, no, just the Premier League. Just there the is, Premier League. There is, one, uh, there is one other thing as well, which obviously the, the each international break this year has been three games. Yes. Mm. Which is another... That's... Again, quite a lot in the in space of maximum where you're away on the international duty is 10 days, some, some are 8 days, some are 10. So to cram in three when some of those are friendlies, I think, is unnecessary. And I think that's just another reason why managers are getting so uptight and, and, and angry about it, is because that is um, certainly maybe not necessary. Yeah, you have to play the Nations League or the Euro qualifiers, we get that. But I think the friendly games, which they've had... Um, rearranged probably didn't need to be played and I think that's one it's just another thing which is which is annoying manager they're, they're happy to deal with the, the fixture congestion if they have to like say contracts have been signed but I think the three uh the three game international break in the space of ten nine ten days is is probably a little bit excessive especially when some of those are friendlies like they haven't got enough games as it is not just for the managers if you saw Kevin De Bruyne's interview post match against Tottenham which was a defeat he was speaking up about it, that he got back very late, he couldn't go to training, he couldn't do anything until the COVID testing had been done. And you just get a training session, effectively, before the next game, which they played on, on Saturday.